Hey everybody, Steve here again, rmtalk.com. Uh, we're here with Jennifer Veneziano, uh, fourth ward alderman candidate for Raleigh Meadows. Jennifer, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me, I'm excited. Absolutely, yeah, me too. This is the fourth one of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully people aren't tired of watching these. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's important that we have these, uh, these you know, um, opportunities to really get you in front of, uh, you know, the people that are going to vote. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so. so so tell me, okay, so you've been on uh, city council here for a while. Mm -hmm. um, what have you learned? What do you think you can improve on? And what will you do if you get reelected? Uh, so I've been on the council about a year and six months, almost a year and a half. Uh, learned a lot so far. <laughs> um, and uh, it's obviously in this last year, it's been a pandemic. Yeah. Um, so that is obviously through, you know, everyone a kind of a monkey wrench in plans. Um, you know, so obviously the council, we had to change gears really quickly. Um, and so I've learned that you have to adapt quickly, um, you know, but being a nurse, that's what we do. You know, we adapt, we, right. we, we adjust quickly and we make, you know, quick, informed, educated decisions. Um, so my professional education has really helped me become um, the older woman that I am now. So, and I really knew going into this position that I wanted to do it because I advocate for my patients and that's kind of been my mantra. I advocate for our residents because that's really what I do. You know, so I never have claimed to have an agenda. I don't have priorities other than what is important to the residents and that's what's important. Um, you know, so I feel like that has even taught me more that how do I communicate to the residents? How do I get their voices heard, you know, from their home to me, then to the council. Um, so that has definitely been a learning challenge and it continues to be a challenge. Um, and then, you know, I, I hope, you know, to keep improving on that, that communication. Um, and then just working through now our, you know, we're so tired of hearing it, but it's true, our new norm. You know, what is the future gonna hold? Um, and I'm really looking forward to moving Rolling Meadows in the, the forward position. We've been very stagnant for a really long time. Yeah. I have young kids here, I'm raising them. You know, I want them to be, you know, like my husband's family, they all grew up here, we're living here now, and my kids to come back here and live. And that's what we wanna look forward to, you know? And so yeah. I want them to be able to say, yeah, I wanna move and stay in Rolling Meadows. You know, so I eventually have grandkids here. <laughs> it's yeah. scary to think, but. Well, you have skin in the game. I mean, it, it, when, you, when you have uh, you know, young kids that are growing up, I mean, the decisions that you make now are gonna affect their life for, Absolutely. for a long time. So uh, obviously it's gonna affect you personally. Uh, so, you, you know, it's important that you, know, you make the right decisions. Absolutely, right? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the big things, we all know there's a disconnect with the businesses, things like that yep. in this town. And um, I know that you are on the Economic Development Committee. Yep. Uh, you know, I've kind of, uh, you know, spoken with you about certain things with RM Talk as well. Um, a lot of creative things, a lot of creativity needs to happen. New ideas need to come. We need to get creative so we can save the businesses that are here, help the businesses that are here, and then also attract new ones to come. Uh, one of the biggest things that we have going for us is we're in between two of the, the biggest suburbs in Chicago. Yep. I mean, population wise, we're surrounded by all these people and, you know, we're just a drive through, drive through town. Yep. And that's sad, but there, there's a lot of potential there. So what are you working on? What, what can we do to fix this? So being appointed to the EDC, um, I was kind of nervous at first because I'm by no means, you know, any know a whole lot about small business um, or business in general. I'm a nurse, you know, but once I was on the EDC, I got really inspired, you know, by the other volunteers on the committee. Yeah. Um, they are very passionate about their businesses, as they should be. And so that, you know, it, it's really when we have these meetings, it's like think tanks, you know, and in different ways, how can we help, you know, the businesses in our community and drive that economic force? 
Um, and I feel like at first we were really kind of stagnant. It was a lot of new committee members. Yeah. It was just kind of finding our groove. We had a new chairperson. It was just, it was, um, you know, just really getting into a good rhythm. And the last, uh, this last meeting that we had last month, it was like almost everyone's light bulb went off at the same time. And it was, it was like probably the best meeting we've ever had. Um, and we came up with the ideas for um, moving forward for our 2021 20, goals um, to do incentives uh, for small mom and pop businesses um, in Rolling Meadows. Um, and then also incentive programs for larger corporations. So unfortunately we have a lot of large buildings that are sitting vacant, you know, like the Capital One building, you know, off of 53. Um, you know, and that's lost revenue to the city. So, you know, and those incentives have to look different because we're we're attracting different businesses. Right. Um, you know, so it's very early in the, the stages, um, but it's one of those, you know, we kind of individually, you know, like Mike Rappi and I, we sit down and we're having lunch. And before we know it, we have two pages of lists of businesses that we want to see on Kirchhoff Road. It's yeah. just, it is so fun and, um, it literally the the committee this last meeting everyone was throwing ideas like we were talking over each other because we were all so excited and so i think moving forward that getting those incentive programs out really is going to help um in the foreseeable future so yeah i'm really happy to hear that i i, I also yeah i heard a, a, a little bit that you know things have been moving in the right direction mm -hmm. with that it, as far as brainstorming and getting a group of people together that are kind of really committed to to doing something that will yeah. work, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, so one other thing that uh, is an interesting point that, you know, we have Arlington Park. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Right. Uh, and also Motorola. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with these developments mm -hmm. that are in direct relation to us and how our traffic is going to work and what the competition and what the lay of the land is going to look like. Right. Um, have you thought uh, much about how to capitalize on whatever happens and the lines of communication so you have maybe a foot in the door to have a say? Right. Or some sort of influence or pre planning so you know what to do? I would love to have some input from, you know, the city of Rolling Meadows to, you know, Arlington Heights or Schomburg, um, you know, for those properties. Um, you know, I call it in a Walgreens perfect world. <laughs> that would be amazing. But at the same time, I'm a realistic person. Um, you know, Arlington Park is in Arlington Heights. Um, we've tried to partner and, and communicate with them on other projects and other, you know, just things going on within Arlington Heights and Rolling Meadows. And, you know, the cooperation hasn't been the greatest. So I'm optimistic that, you know, we can have that communication. Um, but I don't know how well that's going to happen. What I think we have to do is plan on Rolling Meadows side, you know, for the if it's X, Y or Z, um, you know, without really being invited to the table. Um, and then if we are invited to the table, plus. Um, and then same thing with, you know, Schomburg. Schomburg seems to work with us a little bit better. Um, but again, you know, we're kind of like the little stepbrothers <laughs> compared to them. And so they're like, well, you know, we don't really need your input. We'll do what we need to do and then kind of give us a second thought. Um, you know, so I think once we know what their plans are, then we need to tailor our needs, you know, around those. Um, but stay on track of what we do here. You know, something that we've been told by um, different organizations is that something that Rolling Meadows really capitalizes on is our community events. Um, and so that's not going to change whether a bunch of townhomes go into Arlington Park or a big, huge stadium. It's not going to change. So if we keep doing what we do, then we then would tailor, you know, the advertising maybe then to the townhomes that maybe go into Arlington track if that's what goes there you know crazy. you know it it was it, crazy thought of all that whole section being townhomes but <laughs> I, scary. it is scary but i mean it's a very good possibility you know but unfortunately i don't think we have much say and i think we just are going to have to tailor you know what we do to what happens yeah and complementary businesses as well so if you're right. tailoring you know if you know what you're you're working with and you know i know this is something you've, you've been you know working out 
to, to figure out ways to make it a destination, right. make some sort of downtown corridor that's not just corporate. Um, something where, you know, use, utilizing those incentives to get people that maybe lost their job and they have a really good skill. Um, maybe they want to start a business and make it easy. So it's not going to be impossible. You're going to have to wait three months to get a permit so you can do something right. that might not even work. And Absolutely. like, why would you take the risk? Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of different things that, that, you know, if you can make it conducive to businesses trying, then we wouldn't have so many vacancies and Absolutely. we wouldn't need as many townhomes because we live in between two of the biggest residential areas. Exactly. Um, so, you know, that's not the need, I don't think. I, obviously, the townhomes, though, bring tax revenue. Mm -hmm. So that is the thought process, I assume, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, but it's finding a, a good balance, right? You know, so it, it's, you know, we do need the, the tax revenue. You know, but we can't have a whole city of nothing but residential right, either. Right. You know, so I, I mean, you know, the incentive program would really we really want to fill Kirchhoff. You know, we want to make this our downtown right. corridor, you know, and in, you know, the long term plan and the vision. You know, I think that's pretty unanimous on the council and the EDC is that Kirchhoff is our downtown area right. and it doesn't look like downtown. Um, you know, so there's a lot of improvement that can be made. And some of the things we've talked about on those incentive programs is waiving permit fees, you know, um, having, you know, a, like half the cost of some inspections. I mean, this is all things that we're just now starting to roll into of, you know, what are the possibilities? Um, we've even talked about there's a lot. We have a lot in Rolling Meadows of home businesses. You know, a lot of people do these small craft, you know, honey making at home or you know cookie making at home or whatever yeah. um and they kind of want to branch out but they don't need a whole shop right a whole storefront and so that maybe there's a partnership that we can do with one of the retail spaces here on kirchhoff where it's kind of like they sublet a little space co-working space would like co-op kind of thing yeah. you know and but the city kind of manages it so that's another one that we're we just had that idea that we kind of start exploring as well you know to bring some of our home businesses out um you know within to the community to have a little bit more accessibility um you know but that they can't have a whole <laughs> whole storefront or don't don't want to sign a whole lease because they don't know if they can you know sign a five-year lease you know yeah. Yeah, so and, yeah, yeah. I, I I I love that idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um. I don't know how the city would manage that, but I, again, uh, <laughs> it's still in the working. I don't know all the ins and outs of that either. And yeah. that's you know, but I, it's it's just so exciting though to have these ideas. Yeah. And that's I mean that's how things get going, right? You have ideas and they start working and manifesting and you know and you sound like an entrepreneur. I I don't want to go that far. <laughs> Do. I'll uh, stick to nursing. Yeah, right. it's fine. Uh, but you know, I, yeah, new ideas, fresh ideas, yep. things that will actually make sense, things that people could get behind and excited about. That's what we're missing. If you can't get behind the ideas and get excited about it because you feel like there's a possibility and it's not just more of the same, then what are you doing? Exactly. So you know, I love that. Uh, now we'll get into the part that you know. The rebuttal of that is, well, how are we going to pay for it <laughs> and the budget? Yep. And this is a concern for a lot of people. Absolutely. And it's a justifiable concern. I mean, bigger budget means higher taxes. Mm -hmm. We're already losing people because they can't afford their taxes. So that's more lost revenue. That's more yep. empty places. It's a vicious cycle. So what do you do about that? How do you maintain uh, a reasonable budget without increasing spending and getting out of control and you know blowing through money you don't have. Absolutely. So I am by no means a financial guru. Okay. <laughs> Again, like I'm a nurse. Right. Um, you know, I can drop a syringe, no problem. But you know, um, so when it comes to the budget, I, I kind of do it like my home budget. Okay. You have needs and wants. Right. Okay. And then can you afford it? Right. That's kind of how you do it at home. So that's that's, but basic way. that's that's essentially how I approach the city budget. OK, we have a whole finance department and accountants that know how to plan a budget and, you know, figure it all out and then come to us. OK. Right. And so I don't need a finance background in order to do that. part. So um, I you know, and so every time, a, you know, expenditure comes to us, I look at it. Is this a need or a want? OK. And can we afford it? 
And if we do this project now, is it cost effective to do it now? Can we push it off till later? You know, what are the all the ins and outs of it? OK, I was the first older person to say back last March and I say, wait, we need to time out here like we need to reevaluate what our necessity is right now because we don't know where our budget's going. We don't know what our revenues are going to look like. We don't know anything. And so I went back to staff and I said, from here on out, I want to know on every item, is this a need or a want? And if we postpone this, what is it going to cost the city? Um, and and the staff has really adjusted to that. And, and now you see on the agenda for almost every expenditure, there's a there's an explanation as to why. Um, and it's still brought up. If we we just had this on two um, police cars, if we push these cars out till next year, it would cost us like an additional four thousand dollars. Well, that's not cost effective, you know. So we need to put that. It's already in our budget. It's not you know smart to push it off. Um, so when approaching the budget, it's maintaining the services we have, okay? Because as residents, we all love them and we come accustomed to them. Yeah. Um, you know, our tax dollars are going towards them, so we want to maintain them. Um, but it's finding what are the priorities, right? Okay, and and so there have been cutbacks, obviously, um, and we have a really healthy reserve. And when I say reserve, it's basically a savings account for the city. That's what it is. Sure. Um, because we planned for something that happens, like the pandemic. OK, so last year we were at a deficit because we had lost revenue. We didn't have sales tax for food and beverage, for gaming. You know, people weren't paying their property taxes. There was a lot of things that were happening, but we had reserves or our savings account for that very reason. And when the budget was prepared for this year, it was planned for worst case scenario. If we were pretty much closed for the entire year, you know, as an economy, what would it look like? And right. so for this year, it's pretty much planned for a deficit, but it's March, our businesses are open, gaming's open, you know, people are shopping, it's already looking good. Yeah. You know, so I plan that this year will look much better than it looks on paper from when we planned it in December. Um, and that's kind of how I approach the budget. And so I think planning, it's just what can you do with what you have, not adding to it. I am completely opposed to adding to our budget. So you, I'm a taxpayer too. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> let's, let's let's build off of that. Yeah. Because one of the one of the biggest pushbacks that that I hear, and um, you know, one of the key differences uh, between you and your your uh, opponent is the assistant city manager position yes and um is it the right thing to add during a pandemic sure uh a budget you know or you know a, a new uh i guess what do you call it a new position yeah a new a new <laughs> position but a new a new uh, uh salary or whatever sure so yeah what do you say about that so obviously yeah yeah so i'm gonna say that um the seven members on council are in favor of this position so that would tell you something right there that it's easier to say as an outsider looking in no i'm opposed to something the council has inside information as to the very inner workings of the city staff the city government how council is ran and and our weaknesses and our strengths and the council noticed uh right after I was appointed, so a year and four months ago, that one of our um, weaknesses was that we did not have a succession plan for our city manager and that we were left very vulnerable in this area. And so we tasked the city manager as a goal of his, per his contract, to develop a position for an assistant city manager um, in, in the fact that there's no succession plan for his position. And let me just remind residents that our city government is city manager ran. It is not ran by the city council. It is not ran by the mayor. Right. So our city manager makes our day-to-day -day decisions. Our, and he oversees police, the fire department, the city staff, public works, every single department of our city, okay? Yeah. So if the city manager is not available, that leaves us very vulnerable. Right. to make decisions. Now, we have our finance director that can step in for a very temporary you know, time, but that's not her area of expertise. She's 
you know, accountant, <laughs> right. um, you know, and she has had to step in. Um, but again, it leaves us very vulnerable. And we've seen even this last year being in the pandemic, it has taken our city manager away, you know, to deal with the pandemic issues yeah. and then left so many things on the back burner because his time has been sent on pandemic issues. And so if we had this assistant city manager position filled, day-to-day -day things, um, bringing in new businesses, economic development, union negotiations, all of these things would continue to run smoothly and progress while the city manager had to deal with, you know, pandemic, COVID, um, the fire, you know, over on the other side of town, you know, those kind of things. And, and most surrounding communities have a city manager and an assistant city manager. Right, and, and so the thought process behind having <clears throat> or not having an assistant city manager that handles those things like economic development mm -hmm. and business outreach and, and you know allowing, I guess, the, the manager himself to, to, to focus on those higher level issues. Absolutely. Um, and not get caught, get caught up in the details. So they, it's my understanding, they created a new position uh, as a business advocate. Correct. And so if you're looking at, um, you know, adding this new position or returning to the old way of doing it, I guess would be the correct way to say it. But yeah, um, what would that person mean? What would that person do since there already is a business advocate? So the idea that council had is we wanted to leave this initially up to the city manager, since we're a city manager ran government, to decide how he would reallocate funds and positions and responsibilities. And we've received some pushback as it's been advertised the assistant or the city manager doesn't want an assistant. Um, and so it's, you know, so council's position is that yes, we have a business advocate, but our business advocate does not have the scope of knowledge and responsibility to do what an assistant city manager and or our city manager can right. do. Okay. They, it, they, it, it's just, it's kind of, it's comparing apples to oranges. Um, and so the idea is that we would reallocate the funds from our business advocate to pay for the assistant city manager. Um, so we are not, absolutely not adding a salary to our budget. Right, okay? that's the biggest pushback. That is the biggest pushback. I, again, I am opposed to adding to our budget. You know, again, I pay taxes too, yeah. you know? So it is reallocating the money we're already spending on a position that does half the job we need done, where we can spend that money and get the whole job done. Yeah. And that to me is just business smart. And so, and leaves us in a better position as a city. Well, you have to have that 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 line of succession. Absolutely. Um, you know, in place for the just the continuity. Absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, and you know, shit, maybe the guy needs a break. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I don't know if he's taken a vacation in years. I, I you right. know, so um, you know, that in itself is a problem. I mean, he's entitled to vacation, yeah. you know, and and if he is on vacation, like our city still needs to run. You know, right. or if he's out sick, like we still have business to attend to. Yeah, you know, you you actually touched on something that that is very important. The fact that this is not, a, a, you know, it's it's the city is not run by the mayor. No, it's not run. You know, people always well the mayor. What's yeah. the mayor doing about this? No. You know, um, so with with that understanding, like that that position of of city manager is is so important. Absolutely. For the reasons that you just laid out. I mean, like all those different departments, all that different thing. I mean, that's not a job for one person. No. So. And that was very overwhelming to me. The very first or second closed session that we had when I was on, uh, appointed to council um, was to discuss the secession plan. And, and when it was presented for the city manager, like I think my, draw, my jaw hit the floor because I was like, wait, our most important role and position in our government does not have a backup. So that's like saying, you know, our biggest business in the area, Gallagher, okay, employs thousands of people, which the city employs thousands of people, does not have a vice president. It's unheard of. Yeah. So how is it that our city does not have this? It's just, it's bad business. And city government is a business. 
which I've quickly learned, <laughs> which as a, as a resident, I did not know, but it makes sense, right? You, you have money coming in and going out and you're providing services. It, it's a business. So yeah. it, you have to make smart business decisions. There you go, sounding like an entrepreneur again. I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm trying though. <laughs> I'm trying to be smart about it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a touchy subject because there's Absolutely. a lot of uncertainty. People don't want to be, you know, they don't just don't want, you know, people don't have the time to follow closely the inner workings of the government, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, I wanted to sit down and do this because. You know, when people are making these decisions for who's going to represent them in their sure. ward, the decisions that are going to affect their property taxes and if the roads are paved correctly yep. and, you know, um, how your kids are going to grow up, uh, it's really important uh, that, that you have all the information. So sure. I wanted to give you a platform to really lay this out, educate people on why you're the best fit for this, you know, uh, uh, position yourself. So let's, uh, let's drill a little bit further down on the fourth ward in particular, though. Sure. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm sure you've been doing some some canvassing, you know, knocking on some doors, yep. talking to people. What are the biggest concerns in your ward? What are the biggest things that you're hearing from the people uh, um, around town? Sure. So one of the big ones that I hear, um, you know, canvassing and even not canvassing, <laughs> I get a lot of calls on is uh, old fire station, you know, 15. Oh, sure, yeah. um, you know, so the one thing I hear probably 110 percent of the time is we do not want any residential there. <laughs> um, and so I, I reassure residents like so when we had the meeting with the, um, uh, the real estate brokers, I told them, do not bring us any residential options offers it not interested my residents do not want it um you know we have enough there <laughs> so um and so a lot of people are interested what what is going on with the property what are we going to do um and so i basically tell them it's obviously up for sale um we did have one offer but it was for an auto repair shop um and i immediately said stop having an offer is great you know like we we definitely want to sell properties um, but I'm not about to bring a business in to put another one out of business, which is right behind them. That's that's just not smart. No, um, you know, so we we declined their offer, um, you know, and so then we went back and we had a one on one sessions with Public Works Director Horn, Director Horn and Assistant uh, Director Charlton. And they kind of laid out for us like a vision for that corner to help you know, with that vision of downtown Kirchhoff Road mm -hmm. um, and what it could look like. And so I was absolutely on board. Um, and it was very similar to like the downtown Arlington Heights kind of feel, you know, like a two story building with res uh, with retail on the bottom and maybe some studio apartments up top, you know, but the two story kind of looks. Um, and and so we went back and said to the realtor when we renegotiated the contract that this is really what we're looking for for developers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've always put out there to have a restaurant in that old firehouse to me would be phenomenal. I think it would be super it'd cool. Be it'd be awesome, I, personally. Um, and so I, I think that's a big question I get a lot is what are we doing with the firehouse? Um, and then the old firehouse on uh, Plum Grove Road, even though it's not in our ward, but you know we have two new firehouses, you know, what are we doing with them? Um, yeah. So the one on Plum Grove Road, I did vote for keeping for now because we have a really big storage issue um, for public works. Um, the, the property that we have um, over on the other side of town by Nature's Care is not big enough to store all of our equipment. And we store a lot of it on Central Road um, in that building, and that building is literally crumbling apart. Um, and so we're exploring different options on selling that property to the park district and just seeing what our options are because we're not gonna repair it. It's millions and millions of dollars to repair and put a new building. That's, no. Sure. <laughs> Again, no adding to the budget. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was totally in favor of, we have this property, we own it. We're making money off the cell tower. Let's use it. And so that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're using it for storage for you know different departments, and and maybe that's a long term solution. I don't know yet. Um, and maybe in 10, 15 years, I know there's been talk about building a police station. I know I've heard that. Like, um, I think my opponent is talking about building a police station. Maybe that's the option. Is doing it in that old firehouse. You know, it's it's a relatively newer building. You know, so I'm I'm all for reusing what we have. I don't 
want to take out new bonds. I don't want to put our future kids, my kids, in more debt. We have two firehouses to pay for, you know. Yeah, so. and it's not that big of a city. I mean, no. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like there's... 25,000 people. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So that's the biggest question I get is is about the firehouse on uh, on Meadow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm interested to see how that pans out too. I like. I do. I like so the if there's idea. any restaurants looking for a really cool building, I think it would be so cool to have like a well pizza hey, firehouse something. I yeah, mean, yeah. You know, some sort of a bar know, top up top. You yeah. know, kind of like a Wrigley filled kind. Of, I mean, me personally. <laughs> There's a lot of things. A place with arcade games. Right. That'd it's be just awesome. so many possibilities. So, so many different things you can. Yeah. Do. Um, so I yeah I love that. One of the uh, one of the things you, you kind of just remind me of is like, how do we, uh, how do we pitch Rolling Meadows, as a destination. Yeah. To businesses. To businesses. Yeah. Right. So which is hard, and that's one of the things that we've been talking about EDC. Like, you know, so we don't have the. Um, the residential numbers, right? We're only 25,000 compared to Arlington, Palatine, and Schaumburg, you know, that surround us. Um, you know, but we have a lot of cross traffic, yeah, which again, that being a resident, more makes up for I have no idea what any of that meant, you know, but then they, they kind of presented us the numbers and it, I was astonished how many people travel down Kirchhoff Road and Algonquin Road. That's what I'm saying. What, what, you know, when I was doing research on, on this, and one of the main reasons why I started in Rolling Meadows to do the RM talk specifically for this, this development was the fact that there was so much um, untapped potential yeah. with, with traffic. And, um, you know, geographically, we're in the sweet spot in between we multiple are. different areas that are, are attractions. Yep. And, you know, when you have all the residential around and then also the commercial attraction, um, you know, that cross traffic being very close to, you know, the, the highways and expressways, um, this is a, a prime location if it was planned correctly. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, marketed correctly. So, you know, whenever somebody looks at, oh, you're a small suburb, you know, think about uh, like a place like Rosemont, for instance. They have very little residential right. at all, but they're a destination. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's no reason that this couldn't be like that, too. Uh, absolutely. Um, so that was one of the main things. I mean, if you if you if you clearly put something together and you showed that and presented those numbers, those, I'm sure you're doing studies. I'm sure mm -hmm. they've already been done. Yeah. Um, all you got to do is pitch these people. Yep. And if if the if the if the business environment is correct and it makes sense to come here and you can show them the numbers, there's it's an offer you can't refuse. Right. So and yeah. and that was one of the things that we found on council that has not really been reviewed is our comprehensive plan for businesses um, and bringing businesses here and really making this a destination or what is the vision of Rolling Meadows. Um, that hasn't been reviewed in a really long time. Right. And so that goes back to that's a city manager responsibility. And because he's been dealing with the pandemic and other issues this past year, not having this, you know, I don't want to beat it to death, but not having this assistant city manager, that could have been addressed this last year, yeah. you know? And so thank goodness we have a committee like the EDC that's kind of taking the reins and saying, okay, what can we do? What can we plan and ideas and all of this and bring that back down to council to say, hey, can we do incentives? Can, you know, can we do this? Can we do permitting fees waived? Um, you know, but if we had more people equipped on staff, right. then I think some of these things, these problems that we have would have been solved, um, unfortunately. And so my hope is that if we get an assistant city manager, that some of these will progress rather quickly. So what does that look like? How, how, do you, how does that, uh, when do you make a vote or when is there a determination? So we've already tasked him as a goal for 2020 and it was not achieved. And so we rolled it over to 2021. Um, and so we're hoping, obviously, pandemic is kind of relaxing a little bit on his responsibilities that he could focus on um, that goal along with a couple others that council has um, tasked him with per his contract and that he will develop a role description, um, you know, figure out how he's going to reallocate the funds because again, 
it's not council's decision. It's our our city is ran by the city manager. We can make suggestions, right. um, but it's ultimately his decision on how you know it's reallocated. Um, and then he would do the job posting, um, you know, within the community and various. I'm assuming. Uh, office postings or however that's done internally i have no idea sure. and you know applicants would apply and and go through the city manager um council does not have any part in that um the only position we oversee is the city manager and i think that's another misconception is the city council i know there's been a lot of like um statements that city council is micromanaging mm. We don't manage anyone within the city. We we ask a lot of questions because residents ask us a lot of questions, so we need those answers. Um, so I will definitely email like our director of public works. Hey, you know uh, this resident has a question about this. You know, but as far as managing, we have no say over city staff, um, and we cannot direct any staff to do anything. Mm. The only one we oversee is the city manager, and that is it. And that's a that's it's an interesting way to govern. It is. It and, and it was very enlightening when I was appointed to um, the my seat because I had no clue as a resident. Yeah, yeah, and in in this it goes back to education and communication. Um, if you you know you have to know who to hold accountable. Absolutely. Right. So if you're a resident and you're paying taxes, who do you complain to if the job's not getting done correctly? Sure. And and what are what are the channels? How does that work? Sure. So I, my first suggestion would be definitely you know reach out to your alder person. Um, they're usually a little bit more um, accessible. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they have the answers. Sometimes you know we don't. Um, but we usually can direct then those questions to the right person and, and you know get an answer usually pretty quickly. Right. Um, you know, but and, and if we need to escalate that, then you know obviously we have that option to do. Um, and not saying that you're going to call your older person and you're going to get the answer you want. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, so I tell people all the time, I may give you an answer. You may just not like what I have to, you know, the answer I have to give you. Sure. You know, I'm not making any promises. So, um, and, and so that's my first suggestion, you know, and, and that also educates us as older persons, you know, that maybe there's an issue we don't know about and that we need to bring this up in a discussion on a committee of the whole, yeah. um, that it's just something that we're not aware of. Um, and it's it's something good to be knowledgeable about and, and discuss. So yeah, definitely. And so the, you know the theme of this whole thing is really the communication yep. aspect of it. And you know I mean we have a, a diverse type of kind of uh, breakdown of people in the, in this in this area. Um, how do you? I know that you were working on a project, obviously, to reach out to seniors. Yep. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that yes. and how that's been working? I absolutely am excited about this program. So um, Alderman McHale came to me and she said she was a little frustrated. She's like, you know, I'm talking to my seniors in my community and they just don't know how to get registered for their um, vaccines. And I said, listen, I hear it every day at work. You know, I, most of my patients are seniors. And her and I just kept talking, like, wouldn't it be nice to just help them? And then we both were like, why don't we help them? <laughs> so, what a concept. Yeah. What a concept. Like, <laughs> wait a minute, yeah. why don't we just help them? Um, and so her and I just started brainstorming and we partnered with um, the Park District, their senior program, and the library. And so we basically got a vaccine registration program going to where we help our seniors and or anyone really that needs help registering mm -hmm. um, to get their vaccine appointments. We were not guaranteeing vaccines, yeah, their yeah. appointments. Right. Ironically, that's at the same time that our pop up event um, in Schomburg was taking place. And we were able to get, I think the number is a little over 60 people appointments for vaccines so that's far. Great. Um, which is so exciting. Um, and so it's it's still running. We have no end date in sight because if there's people that still need help, we want to help them. Um, you know, we want to get everyone and anyone registered that wants a vaccine. And, and now, um, I know we talked about this when you were launching it. Um, 
Have you gotten volunteers to? We do. We have a lot. We have more volunteers than we need, which is amazing. Um, We had a lot of high schoolers volunteer, but we were able to really troubleshoot most of the phone calls over the phone. Um, We only had a few that we had to come in with um, at the library. Um, And so and because the pop up event happened so quickly, we were able to get them appointments really fast. Um, So we haven't really had the opportunity to use a lot of our high schoolers yet. Um, And we've had a couple of the residents that volunteered in Ward 1 Mm -hmm. um, that have been helping make those phone calls. Um, But the the volunteers have been amazing. Um, And they're experts now themselves. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, Yeah. it's, but I feel like that's what Rolling Metals is. Like when you call for help within our community, like people step up. We have a very, you know, good community. We do. Um, you do. You know, people disagree and get crazy on the community Absolutely. chatter sometimes, but that's how they all. <laughs> and you are. just keep scrolling. Yeah, <laughs> you just gotta keep scrolling. It's an interesting read. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. But uh, yeah, it, and you know, the the thing is, it's uh, it's you got to play to the strengths, right? right. So I, I love the fact that hey, you identified a problem and then you solved it. Yeah. I just, I love, obviously it's near to my heart, right? Yeah, Being a nurse, a nurse I mean, like the fact that we're getting vaccines, that is less patients that I will ever see, you know, that I potentially won't have to see because they're COVID positive, yeah, you, and, know? you know? So these people that, that are, you know, older, that are scared yeah. of going out, you know, they, they want to go out bad. They want to yes. see their family. They want to, you know, go out yes. to eat and not be worried about it. Um, you're, you're, you're offering a quality of life improvement to Absolutely. people. And that's so important. When, when my patients highlight to their week is me coming over for the 40 minutes to an hour, that is sad. I mean, I love doing it, don't get me wrong, but that's sad. Sometimes yeah. I, us nurses coming to their home are their only social interaction this right. past year. Um, you know, because they're so scared, they can't have their family and friends right. over. You know, they're visiting through their family through the windows, or you know, they don't have any close interaction, and it breaks your heart. But so, if we can get their vaccine for them and get them signed up, then you know, like so yeah. Alderman Mikhail and I are like, what do we got to do? Let's do it. <laughs> so I love we it. did I love it. That. That's that's a great great story. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we can, you know, do similar things like that for other issues. Absolutely. You know? So there's the, um, I just got the Sierra Club endorsement and they, which is an environmental um, club uh, here in Rolling Meadows, Palatine, a couple other surrounding communities, which I did not know anything about again. Um, and they were bringing awareness to some environmental issues. And I was like, you know what? These seem like these are another incentive, or not incentive, but issues that we could bring up within the community because people don't know about them. Right. And very similar to our vaccine, you know, program that once people are educated about it, they will jump on board. And you know, so I that's another thing, you know, into the future, like if we just bring awareness to some of this stuff, right? Um, yeah. And and partner with the right people. And, and you can really get a lot done. You definitely can. That was one of the driving factors of doing the RM Talk site. It was, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of groups doing things right. in their bubbles <laughs> that have a lot of relation to each other and they're not even aware. If right. You, you know, the, there's a, you know, the butter, butterfly clubs and yeah, yeah, yeah. birds and all sorts of things that, that people are really passionate about. Yep. They're going to the parks. We have great parks and there's lots of opportunities and events. So it's like, you know, with the pandemic, it's hard to schedule things and get mm-hmm. a calendar going because everything's, you know, to be determined or whatever. Right. But, um, but yeah, the, the idea is to get that stuff together, pool resources in a private way, you know, some, a volunteer type of way. Yeah. Something that isn't coming out of the taxpayers' dollars. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and that's that's leveraging your strength of community. Right. Which I think we have, right? We do. That's I think that's our strongest quality yeah. in Rolling Meadows. I call it, everyone's heard me say it, it's our own little Mayberry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't go to Jewel without running into someone I know. I mean, yeah. um, and so my husband's family being here for 60 years, I get, you know, a lot of times, oh, like I went to school with so-and-so or, right. you know, and, and, and I love that. I just... I I, yeah. I love that my kids can play out in the you know in the the court and we know our neighbors right. and people know who my kids are and I know they're safe and the fact that if you reach out to your neighbors and I'm not talking the ones that live next door to you I'm talking right. the community neighbors people help 
Yeah. And that's what it's about. And I think this pandemic silver lining has really brought that out in right. our community and other communities. Um, but it, I, that might be my favorite thing of the pandemic or, or the good of, thing. There's not yeah. a lot of good things. I love the fact that people are more self-conscious or self-aware of hygiene, you know, personal sure. hygiene, you know, hand washing, hand sanitizing. I mean, as a nurse and, you know, we keep saying like the one one good thing about this whole thing, you know, people have really become aware of it all. But right. for sure, it's community involvement. It's a big deal. Yeah. So how do you see... Um how do you see spring times here now? How do how do we see events like what Mike did out out there? Yeah. Uh, are there ways to make it easier for people to do that where it's not going to break their bank? Are there are there funds allocated, you know, from the city? To, yeah. Or at least are there resources where you can start getting volunteers to help or something yeah. like that? How can we do that? So. I think moving forward this year, being that our the numbers for being vaccine vaccinated are getting higher and higher each day, um, I think that people are going to be able to have more any, more events. And I think it is a personal choice. Sure. Okay. Um, you know, if you feel that it's safe and you are in a state where you know you feel that you know if you are possibly exposed, you are safe. You know, you have to go out with the possibility that you could be exposed because you don't know. Um, and so if you feel, you know, myself, I've been vaccinated, so I feel safe going out into the community. Right. Um, you know, and so if it's safe, then I think that people are more aware of socially distancing, wearing a mask, you know, and just kind of personal space right. um, than they ever have been. You know, so I'm really hoping this summer that we can have some of our traditional events. You know, I've, I've had the question, are we going to have Fourth of July parade? I hope so. Like. You it's know, it is. Thing, I yeah. think we all just need some more, you know, and some of our normalcy back. Right. Um, you know, but I think it's a personal choice again. You know, kind of I said it about trick or treating. It's a personal choice. But look at trick or treating. Like the community literally changed the way we trick or treated. Now, it helped that it was like a beautiful day out, you know, but people were out in their driveways, sitting right. up tables, you know, or they put them candy on state. I mean, it was so creative. It might have been the best Halloween we've ever had within a community. And I don't think I've ever seen that many neighbors out at one time. It, <laughs> it well, was there wasn't any, fun. There wasn't much to do. Right. Like, yeah, and so good. I think that's it. Like you change, you evolve, right? You've learned. Yeah. And so I think that this summer or spring, we're going to, we've learned and we're evolving. Yeah. And so I hope that we can do that. And there's definitely funds. We've, we've always had events funds. Um, and then there's also a fundraising event um, fund set aside already, um, you know, through the city that they do. And it's rolled over, obviously, because there was yeah. nothing last year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there's funds there to spend, you know, for these events, um, you well, know, that didn't get spent last year either. That's, yeah, hopefully you can blow them all and just have an extravaganza, right? right? <laughs> Let's bring back Diamond Fest yeah, is what I keep something. asking. Let's bring back Diamond Fest. Let's bring back something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I love uh, I love the idea. I love the positivity. Yeah. Uh, you know, the creativity of it. It's not easy. Uh, it's a hard job. There's a lot of moving parts, as you obviously know. Right. Um, and uh, so, I mean, I guess the question here just a personal thing like why did you decide to 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 really get into this mm -hmm. you know yeah so um when i was in nursing school i was on um an organization for it's it's called student nursing association of illinois and so i was on the state board um for nursing students and so they had political action days in springfield for nursing students and then the day after was for nurses um, and you go to Springfield and you lobby for um, initiatives that are important to nurses. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of talking to one of our advisors um, and he's like, John, it's like, you know, you really should think about doing this. And I'm like, you are crazy. <laughs> I'm like, how am I ever going to juggle all of this? Like, no. And I kept saying, you know, it, it, the six of us that were on that board or eight of us, it was, you know, there's just not enough nurses in the political arena. A lot of our decisions are made about health care and um, are just ways of life that impact our way of life. And we don't have very, med very many medical professionals to yeah. help make those decisions. 
And so being in the community a short period of time, I think I was like eight months, something like that, um, that we were actually living here. Um, and I was like, and the opportunity came for the appointment. And so I met with Mayor Gallo, I submitted my resume and I met with Mayor Gallo and I basically said, listen, I feel that nurses should be more involved in politics. Um, because what is our number one profession that we do is we advocate for our patients. Well, what are residents like? They're basically our patients. Um, and so that's what I want to do. I want to talk and represent my neighbors. And, and so that really inspired me. And so that's why I did it. I, I just want to make our community better. Um, you know, and so I think yeah. my profession really drove it. Um, and I've gotten a lot of support, you know, from the hospital, um, you know, in these leadership roles. And so it just, it keeps pushing me. <laughs> and I still manage to juggle it all. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, you know, hey, the, sometimes the, the people that are really gunning to get into politics are the worst people to get into politics. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why are yeah, you doing I this? I don't know. Yeah, it's not a good fit. Um, but no, I love the story. I, I love, I, you know, I get a good sense of, you know, just kind of that you're, you're, you care, you know, you're trying, I to, do. trying to do some things. I mean, um, and, um, you know, I wish you the best. Uh, so this is, like I say, an hour always blows by fast. super fast, uh, great conversation. Um, uh, but you got to make your case. So yeah. why are you the best candidate? Uh, why should people vote for you? Thanks. So I think, um, being on the council for a little over a year and a half, um, you can go back on my, you know, kind of track record. Um, you know, I represent the fourth ward in really Rolling Meadows. Um, I, it's not about me. It's not my agenda. It's not my personal opinion. It's about what's, you know, the residents want or need. Um, and I always have the best intentions. I'm very transparent. I'm sure you can probably see that in this last hour. <laughs> I'm pretty much an open book. Um, you know, I am very compassionate and caring, or I wouldn't even be a nurse, obviously. Right. Um, you know, and so I care. I, I care and love this community. I'm raising my family here, um, you know, and I want to make this community better for the next generation. Um, I want to leave it better than what it is now. Um, and I think that I have a lot of qualities that can help get us there. Um, and it's not one particular thing that's gonna get us there. It's not just the budget. It's not just, um, you know, what the residents want. It's not just working on the council. It's everything. Not one of these topics that we've talked about is going to be detrimental to this community. They all have to work together. The businesses, the residents, the city staff, you know, all of it, it all has to work together. And I work very well with everyone. Um, and, and giving the residents that voice um, and what they need and what they want uh, is what's important. Um, you know, and, and I know I've been, people have asked, you know, I don't hit on the budget a lot. No, I don't, you know, because the budget is, it, it's, it's, it's good right now. I, we're coming out of a pandemic. Um, you know, and so I think if we improve our businesses, our new businesses coming in and we move our community forward, we cannot stay stagnant anymore. We cannot go backwards. OK, we have to move forward. And I think we need new, fresh people, new ideas to do that. You know, we've tried the old ways and the old past, you know, and the people that have done it before. It's new. T it's time for new people. Um, and I'm one of them. And I think I've shown that this last year and, you know, six months or whatever. It's um, I'm very enthusiastic about it, obviously. Yeah. So I hope that sells it enough. And obviously I am always open for questions and people call me all the time or email me. So, well, there was a few times you sounded like an entrepreneur. Now you sound like a politician. <laughs> I try and I hate politics. <laughs> But when I say I'm really available, I really am. No, like, I, 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 I'm joking with you. I hate trying to sell yourself. It's like in the interview when you say like, 
what is your worst quality? And you're like, I don't know. I work too hard. <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. never know what to say. <laughs> right. No, I, it's, uh, it's, it's great. And you know, the, I think that you made your case. Uh, you, you obviously, as an incumbent, you're already kind of in it. So right, you have a little right. bit more like- Knowing of the inner working. Yeah, and, and, and it's important though that, that I think you explained it in a way that makes sense. Right. Which is very important. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I'm just a resident. I, I mean, right. that's just it. I am not. Um, I'm not a politician. <laughs> to reemphasize that, I'm not a politician. I'm not a financial person. I am a nurse that loves this community, raising my kids here, you know, and that wants to make our community better. That's. I mean, that's that's, that's the short and gist of it. That's perfect. Know? Let's so, leave it there. I, thank you. you know, I I really appreciate your your time and um you know again early voting has already started yep. you can literally vote right now yeah uh when you're when you're watching this and then uh, uh april 6th vote before april 6th where can they vote they can vote well our word is a little goofy it depends on your address on where you vote so i encourage you to go to the city clerk uh website cook county clerks and put in your address and it'll show you where to vote um because some of us in our ward go to sandberg and some at the library and then um and it'll tell you exactly and then uh early voting you can go to the courthouse cook, right now. to the courthouse yep 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 awesome well jennifer it's a pleasure i really Thank appreciate you. all your time this has been fun yeah same this is probably the less least stressful one we've had good <laughs> it was fun it was yeah. fun awesome well, thank thanks you again. thanks for watching everybody